What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to run a perfect curl and how to run a perfect comeback route. So we're mainly gonna be talking about the 45 degree angle breaks, how you guys can break in stride, how this is something that you can learn and that you can teach to somebody, and just overall how you guys can become a better route runner. So I hope this video gives you guys some value, but also fellas, if you guys want a full four week workout schedule for wide receivers on the field with the specific drills and techniques and exercises that you guys can do, check out that very first link in the description fellas for our 28 day on-field wide receiver workout plan. You'll get a full four-week-long booklet where we give you each specific exercise, specific sets, specific reps, and rest days, and all of the above. And then we'll also include an instructional video where we break down each drill, a full-speed example of each drill, and how that's supposed to help you. So check out that very first link in the description, fellas, for a 28-day wide receiver on-field workout plan. Let's get started. So first round we're looking at here is from Darnell Moon. He's going to be running this curl route against zone coverage. Kind of like a different um, variation of a curl route. Um, kind of more so like a stop route in a way, but it's the same kind of idea. It's going to be the same snap because we're mainly focused on the stem and the break point. And this is kind of like an inside stem, right? Just kind of sitting right there. Ball is going to be out to him. Okay. So now let's talk about this. So the main thing is the reason why I felt the need to post this video is because last week I was posting a lot of Jerry Judy videos, right? And the, my favorite thing, whenever I post a Jerry Judy video is when people are like, Oh, you can't teach that. That's just that he's just that talented right now. These are going to be three examples today of three receivers at the NFL level, the high school level and the collegiate level, all doing the exact same thing that Judy does and how you can actually do that and how you can apply that to your game because yeah he's a god-given he's a great athlete but this is something that you can teach right so the main thing is about any kind of 45 break anytime I'm dropping into a route where I got to come back to the ball or run a dig whatever is that I got to be in stride into the break point I can't be slowing myself down I can't get up to this break point and then start chopping my stride down because the second I start chopping my stride down I start losing my speed and when I lose my speed that's going to make this DB drive on the ball because again he's trying to match my speed the only reason he's running full speed is because I'm running full speed and he's threatened by this like deep over route, right? So that's like the inside stem that I take. When I take an inside stem and I'm running this like stop route, curl route, it looks a lot like when I just try to run over the field and get to the opposite hash. So that's how I have to make it look. I got to actually be in stride. I got to actually pump my arms and I got to actually go. And now you see how Mooney does such a great job of, he keeps perfect pad level right here because another thing guys will do is they'll be running full speed, but then right before they hit that break, that pad level stands straight up in the air and they expose that number. That DB shouldn't even be able to tell what number you're wearing or anything. It's all about body language, right? It's all about stride, speed, and body language. So when your eyes are straight forward, your hips and your shoulders are committed to the break, and you're in stride, that's what gets the DB to commit. Now, the thing that's going to get you out of this break fast is you got to snap down. So you got to use that trigger step, right? Now, this is the one where everybody says that, oh, you can't teach us. Oh, this is just athleticism. You have to be born with this type of a skill, right? But you see Mooney, when he gets into this route, same thing, right in stride, and he's violent with his hips. And it's the same exact technique that Judy uses, right? He's dropping his hips. His chin goes to his knee. This is a low explosive position where this DB is not going to be able to react in time because when you guys can get to this position on a single step, on this outside trigger step, and you guys are actually able to drop your pad level, drop your weight, and get down in this route, that stops you. It stops you on a dime, right? And that's ultimately the goal when you're running a 45 break or a curl or a comeback break, right? So I want to be able to get to this position because number one, it slows me down, but number two, this is a position where I can create energy. It's like a 40 yard dash. You don't run a 40 yard dash standing straight up without your hand in the ground. You actually get down in a stance so you could create that explosion and actually drive out. And that's the goal. I want to be able to create that explosion. If he had to drive back to the ball, he could here because he's in that explosive position and because he's actually low. So that's the main key on any kind of curl route. I got to make sure that I run and I got to make sure I drop right in stride. There's no indicator, not chopping my feet, not raising my pad level. My hips are violent right in stride and I'm actually getting low because one, DB doesn't have time to react to that. Two, that explosive position allows me to stop on a dime or win that race back to the ball. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. And again, another thing I want to add before we move on, he doesn't take three steps here, fellas. It's not about steps. It's about being able to get out in the least amount of time possible. Least amount, I, I got to get out of this break faster than what the DB can get out of the break. And that's pretty much it at the end of the day. So again, let's count his steps. He goes one, two, three, four, five, right? Takes five steps right here. It's not that three step break that everybody talks about, or even a two step break that I've been asked before. It's five steps, but the those five steps are actually five steps where he's selling vertical and dropping on a dime rather than slowing down like a lot of people do because they're so concerned with steps. Be concerned with selling vertical. Be concerned with dropping on a dime and eliminating time spent at the top of the route. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great example for Mooney here getting into the route, dropping his hips violently and being able to decelerate. So now let's take a look at this second clip from a high school receiver, right? So he's going to be running a comeback, right? And so this brings me back to the point again where people don't think that you could teach this. People don't think that you could learn this type of stuff. So let's watch this clip 
flip. So he comes off here, running this comeback route, drops right in stride, and is able to actually get out of this break, right? Again, if you could learn this at the high school level, this is what's gonna happen to the DB when you do this. Because trust me, the high school DBs, what they're used to is guys getting up into a break, beating the drum, and then being slow out of the break. So they have all the time to react in the world on it, and they don't get any space. But if you guys can do this, especially at this level, that's gonna get you a ton of space, right? So now, when he's getting up into this route, I want you to see something here, this stride length. Stride length stays the exact same. He's breaking right in stride. There's nothing that changes about that. He's got great pad level. He's got great stride. He's pumping his arms, and where are his eyes? His eyes are forward. He's not starting to turn his eyes and look down that 45 and start to turn his hips. He's committed to this break all the way, right? So now, on any kind of 45 break, you've got to be able to not turn your hips too soon because this is what a lot of people do because they're not disciplined with their eyes. You want to be looking straight forward as long as possible. So if you start to come up into this route and you start to kind of turn your eyes and you start to like glance down that 45 break that you're trying to get to, your hips and your shoulders will naturally start to turn and you don't have as violent of a drop and that allows that DB, that you're telegraphing to that DB exactly where you're going. So I got to stay committed to the fate of this thing, right? And again, high school receiver doing the exact same thing. So now let's talk about it. Trigger step right in stride and look at this explosive position that he gets to at the top of the break. This is the money making position right here. This is the spot that we need to get to. This is where we want to be every single time that we snap down or use that trigger step. My chin is to my knee. My hips are violent. I'm in this explosive position and I'm able to actually drive out of it. That explosive position will give him energy back to the ball, especially if the quarterback throws it down here to where he has to accelerate, right? That's a great job by this receiver. That's a great job pushing vertical. That's a great job cutting in stride again, fellas, to run that perfect curl, to run that perfect comeback, this is what you have to do. It's not about slowing yourself down. It's not about chopping your feet. It's not about raising your pad level up to get into a break. It's about making everything look like a fade and using that trigger step, that money-making position that we talked about to be able to get out of this route. That's it. That's all it really comes down to. For the people who don't think that you could teach that, for people who don't think that you're, this is not something that you can learn how to do, um, there are obviously a lot of things that tie into it, right? You got to have knee stability, ankle stability, your hamstrings got to be strong, your glutes got to be strong. You got to have good core strength, but that's part of the reason that we work on all those things as a wide receiver. But this is something you 100% can learn and is not something that, because everybody who thinks you can't learn it has a very limited way of thinking and they're never going to get it anyways. You can't fix that, right? I can fix a lot of things on the field for you, but I can't fix what goes on in your head, right? So let's watch this thing again full speed. This is a great example of how you want to stay full speed, how you want to stay full stride, keep a good pad level and actually drop right in stride. That's a great route here by this receiver. So now let's take a look at Calvin Ridley here, right? Same idea, kind of a stop route again. But again, who's to say he couldn't come out of this break and run a 45? I think the ball's just out so early that it's really not a huge deal of him coming out of this break. But again, what has he got? Right in the stride. Look where that trigger step is. It looks like he's almost reaching. That's just his stride length. And how low does he get? Chin goes to where? Watch this. I know it's a little blurry at the clip, but watch where his chin goes. Chin goes to knee, explosive position, and you see how quick he's able to get out of it. And this DB has a great recovery time. But you got to understand, especially at that college level, all those DBs are going to be fast, right? Every single DB is going to be a good athlete. They're probably going to be pretty big guys, especially in today's world. And they're going to be disciplined. They're going to have good techniques. So when you guys drop down into a route, those little details matter. This little bit of separation, that matters right there. Because imagine if what Ridley would do if he was coming up into a break and he started to slow his speed down and chop down or raised his pad level up or started to prepare for this break by slowing his speed. This DB is all over this thing because his DB play is actually pretty talented, right? So if I don't give him any indicators, I don't care how talented of a DB you are you're going to be able to get a little bit of separation, but you got to be a salesman and you've got to be able to sell vertical with your stride, with your pad level, with your eyes, with everything, and then be able to use that trigger step to cut right on a dime, get that separation, and then be able to make this play. It's a great route there by Calvin Ridley. It's a perfect example of why the details matter. These details matter. Everything that we talk about here matters. These, Because again, you look at those best guys in the world and how I know this is because they've reached out to me before and they've said, hey man, like the, the details that you talk about, like, that's exactly what we think about. And I've talked to coaches before who were like, hey man, this is the exact stuff that we teach. And that's what matters at the next level, fellas. It's about details. The details matter. The details are what gets you open. And the details are what helps you create that separation. Let's watch the thing again, full speed. Stay in stride, good pad level, and get to that money-making position like we talked about where I drop my hips, 
Shin goes to my knee. I'm in a low explosive position to where I can get out of this break. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Always appreciate the feedback that you guys give. And also, fellas, 28-day on-field wide receiver workout plan, all the specific things you need to be able to do on the field to improve your route running, press releases, catching ability, overall explosiveness, just everything about the wide receiver position into a specific four-week schedule. Very first link in the description, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.